Peace, everybody. What's good? It's up, boy, Coach Malachi Williams, and you and I'm tuned to True Media Today USA Boxing. Let's go. For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble. I want everybody to check this out. Um, Brian Garcia. You know, uh, you know, as you guys know, the past weekend, you know, Ryan Garcia just lost against Tank Davis. You know, he fought a valid effort. A lot of people are saying that he quit. When I initially saw the fight, you know, I didn't think he quit. I thought that, hey, man, it was a hell of a body shot, yada, 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 yada. But right when the referee finished the count, he jumped right up and, and, and you know, embraced, kind of like embraced the ref and all that stuff there. So when I looked at it again, yeah, he could have got up. Now, was he hurt from the shot? Yes, he was hurt from the shot. Could he, could he have gotten up and beat the count? Yes, he could have when I looked at it again. But he made a decision not to. I think once he saw uh, that Tank was on the other side of the ring looking at him, and he knew Tank was going to finish him, I think that if, if Ryan Garcia would have gotten up and tried to continue, he would have got he would he would have been finished. Uh, Tank would have stopped. Tank would have finished him. Probably stressed him out um, in the seventh round, and he maybe he wouldn't have gotten up um, again. So did he quit without looking at it again? Yes. Did he get hurt by the body shot? Yes, he did get hurt by the body shot. He wasn't thinking about that. And um, so that is true. He did get hurt by the body shot. Tank Davis is a short, compact dude. He was up under him. He caught him clean, too. Right when Ryan Garcia was opening up to throw his right hook, he left his ribs wide open to the shorter fighter. So he did get hurt. But did he quit? Yes. He could have gotten up, beat the count, and continued. But uh, he was afraid. He was afraid that, hey, man, I already know this is not going to end well for me. And he made he made a decision for him. Uh, Ryan Garcia got paid eight figures for this fight. I'm hearing that Ryan and Tank got paid anywhere between ten million and fifteen million dollars. I don't know um, if it was the fifteen or not, but um, I'm hearing they got at least ten million dollars a piece. You know, the, uh, the fight purse was uh, fifty fifty or something of that sort. So, which is good. Uh, which is good. That's very very good for those guys. Um, more than likely, it's back in lace, so they have to wait until all of the money comes in from the pay per views in order to get the rest of their money on the back end. Um, but another thing people were talking to me about, and what, 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 where were Oscar De La Hoya, Joe Goosen, and uh, Bernard Hopkins? They were not there in the post-fight press conference. And I, me I remember telling you guys, you know, when I went to L.A., I interviewed Joe Goosen. And there was a lot of things that I knew. I knew Ryan Garcia wasn't training. I knew Ryan Garcia was not um, uh, showing up to the gym. He was only training three days a week. I said a lot of these things in the, on, on the show to you guys what was going on, you know, because I'm boots on the ground. I was there out in L.A. So Ryan Garcia, and he even did an interview basically saying that, you know, I, I do my own thing. I have my own vision. When it comes to Boston, I follow my own philosophy. A lot of you guys saw that, in, you know, saw that, um, that video that he made, that interview that he gave. And it showed, you know, um, his timing was off. You know, he, he chose not to have a, um, a tune-up fight in January. Oscar De La Hoya did let that be known that he felt that that was a mistake by Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia chose to do that. So everything that Ryan Garcia did leading up to the fight did not help him. Um, they did have a mole in the camp. They had a sparring partner from uh, a sparring partner, uh, you know, who, who, who was giving information to Tank Davis's team. And um, Ryan Garcia has, an, uh, I think, a manager. I forgot the guy's name. He has a manager that um, pretty much works for Al Heyman, from what I'm hearing. I knew about that as well. That pretty much is giving information to Javante Davis's team. He works for, he actually works for Ryan Garcia. So Ryan Garcia, you know, and um, people were trying to blame Joe Goosen. You know, Two-Tone, the superstar, was saying Joe Goosen, and Two-Tone was dead wrong about that. Joe Goosen would never do anything like that. And some people were saying, well, you know, Joe Goosen, you know, he works for, he works for the PBC, you know, as an announcer and stuff like that. But Joe Goosen wouldn't do that. And I'm not saying that because I interviewed Joe Goose and he wouldn't do that. So a lot of you guys were just speculating, not knowing what you were talking about, and just throwing names out there. And But you never threw the name around. You never threw Ryan Garcia's manager or advisor. I think it's his manager or advisor. You never brought his name up. That's how I knew you didn't know what you were talking about. And you didn't bring up the sparring partner. And the sparring partner actually shot a video basically saying that he was the one that was giving the information uh, right after the fight. So that's what it is. But why, why um, Oscar De La Hoya and uh, Joe Goosen and, 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 and um, Bernard Hopkins was, wasn't there? I don't know. I do know, and I told you guys on my show, that no one on Ryan Garcia's team wanted him to make that fight. No one wanted, them, wanted him to make that fight. 
because they knew that he wasn't ready. He didn't listen to Oscar. Oscar told him, Ryan, you're not ready for this fight. He didn't listen to Bernard Hopkins. D Hop said, Ryan, you're not ready for this fight. And he didn't listen to Joe Goosen. You know, so, and he got what he was looking for. So now Ryan Garcia had the experiences to see, man, I should have listened to my team, all of that stuff there. But Ryan Garcia is a kid. He's 24 years old, but he has a childlike mentality. He's not there yet. I remember when I interviewed my, my brother, um, Anthony Peterson. And, Ant, you know, and you can guys can go back and look at the interview. That interview has like over 50,000 views. Ant said that um, Tank has too much man strength. He's in the zone right now. He's in his prime. Ryan ain't ready. And Ant even called it. And, and I said it a while ago. I say every time I think about this Tank Davis fight, Ryan Garcia fight, if you look at any of the shows that I did um, in March, when I was calling Ryan Garcia an Instagram model, a TikToker, and he don't stand a snowball chance in hell. You guys remember that. I was making mockery of Ryan Garcia. But then when I started hyping the fight up, I started saying, I don't know. Well, oh no, boy. Big Bo Ryan, he might have a chance. Same thing I did to Ronan Romero. That's what I do when, when fights get made. You know, because, you know, we got to sell a fight. Me being a content creator, I want to see. You know what I mean? You know, I want to get the excitement. Because at the end of the day, I'm all for the sport of boxing. You know what I mean? I don't have a dog in a race, and I don't have any emotional attachment to any of these fighters that's currently boxing today. They're not Hagler. They're not Duran. They're not Sugar Ray Leonard or uh, Robinson. So that's the way I see it. But, um... But um, Ryan Garcia, he has a lot, you know, he has a lot of growing to do. You get what I'm saying? Where does he go from here? I have no idea. Um, his team did not, you know, they were not there for him. A lot of people feel they should have been there for him. And I felt like they should have been there. They should have been there. Bernard Hopkins, Oscar De La Hoya, Joe Goosen should have been there. I really don't know, have any information as of right now, guys, why they didn't show up, why they left him. You know what I mean? It is what it is. You know, I don't know, you know, Ryan Garcia can always go back to Instagram he can always go back to making TikTok videos. He is an Instagram model. He's a TikToker. And his TikTok and Instagram fans, social media fans, will be there for him. But um, he showed that he's not a complete um, fighter. Ryan Garcia is not a complete fighter at all. Um, he needs certain types of fighters that needs to, that's going to stand in front of him that don't have the footwork. The ring got killed with Tank Davis. He's not on that level. Ryan Garcia, you know, I'm not going to say the guy's name, but... One of my friends that's in the boxing, he even said that Ryan Garcia is probably one of the most overrated fighters in boxing. And he is overrated to a degree. He has fast hands, but he has terrible footwork. And if you know anything about the sport of boxing, you can have the fastest hands on the planet. But if you don't have the footwork to match the hand speed, you're not going to be able to set your shots up, you know, in order, to, in order to knock the guys out or to get your kill shots in there. And boxing is all about footwork. You get what I'm saying? So Tank Davis is a complete fighter. Ryan Garcia didn't have any business in the ring with him. But it, hey, but at least he got paid. Did he quit? Yes. He could have got up and continued. He would have got knocked out now, but he still could have got up and continued. So he doesn't, you know, so the Mexican fans who were saying that, hey, he ain't really no, no true Mexican like that. Remember I told you guys, I was in L.A. I didn't find a Mexican nor a Chicano that was rooting for Ryan Garcia. All of them said that he was going to get knocked out. When I say all of them, I'm not talking about the casual boxing fans or just the hardcore boxing fans. I'm talking about guys who make a living in the sport of boxing, from trainers to, um, you know, to sparring partners. All of them said that. When I was in San Antonio, same thing. When I was in New Mexico, same thing. So all of those guys is right. And even, um, and, and you know, guys, I was telling you guys, and even back in February, he didn't stand a snowball chance in hell. Now, was Ryan Garcia a live dog? Yes, he was a live dog. He was a live dog. And he did have a puncher's chance. And um, Tank did take him very seriously, but they did have moles in his camp. Um, actually, two of them, you know, the spawn partner as well as Ryan Garcia's advisor, you know, or the guy. I think I forgot his name, his advisor or his manager. I forgot the guy's name, and that's who it was. It wasn't Joe Goosen. So for all you guys saying Joe Goosen betrayed Ryan Garcia, that's not true. Joe wasn't giving information to nobody. And the fact of the matter is Tank Davis did not need a mole in Ryan Garcia's camp in order to beat Ryan Garcia. Didn't even need it. You get what I'm saying? So it is what it is. Ryan Garcia didn't listen. He paid the price for it. But hey, at least he got paid for it. Where does he go up from here? Ryan, my advice to you, go back to doing TikTok. You know, you're a cute guy. You have dimples. Um, you have a good career in, in, in corporate America, uh, modeling and stuff like that. You know, your guy liner and stuff like that. You can continue to do that. You made a boatload of money fighting Tank. Um, and, you know, you did good. You did the best of your ability. You did try to fight. I, I, give you, I take my hat off to you, Ryan. You did try to fight. You didn't run. You were trying to fight in there. You just made a lot of mistakes. And you'll learn from it. Um, will you be able to bounce back from it? 
I don't know. Mentally, you know, you're not the strongest guy in the world mentally. And we saw that from even when you was in the, um, in training camp with, with um, Canelo Alvarez. Once Saul Canelo Alvarez even said that Ryan Garcia, he said Ryan Garcia is lazy. He said that he used to show up, that, you know, show up to training camp late. And then when he, when he show up to camp, he only trains for like an hour and he leave. You was in there taking selfies while you was hitting the pass with Eddie Reynoso, um, taking selfies, going doing Instagram lives in the gym with Canelo while Canelo was training. So Canelo even said that, man, this kid is not focused. He's a kid. And um, it showed. You know what I mean? So you can't blame Joe Goosen for the reason for, for your failures in the fight because you don't train. Until Ryan Garcia dedicates himself to the sport of boxing, like how Tank Davis does, like how Floyd Mayweather did, like how Saul Canelo Alvarez does, like how one Terrence Crawford does. And until he con until he commits himself like that, he would never be a top tier elite level fighter. He would just be an Instagram fighter. I would you know what I like I would like to see? Uh Ryan Garcia, you can make some big money fighting Jake Paul. I think if Ryan Garcia and Jake Paul were to get into a fight, host a match, because Ryan because Jake Paul is a YouTuber turned boxer and Ryan Garcia is a boxer turned Instagram model, TikToker, and YouTuber. So I think if Ryan Garcia can do that, because your fan base is a casual fan base and your fan base is a social media fan base. You don't have a boxing fan base. You have a social media fan base. So I think that if you bring the social media boxing fans from, from Jake Paul and you combine that with the social media boxing fans of a Ryan Garcia, especially coming off of this Tank Davis fight, that would do massive numbers and that would be a big fight for you. So I think that's the route that Ryan Garcia should go. You're not going to beat any killers in 140. And we know you can't beat none of the elite, elite fighters in 135. Um, why, be, why Bernard Hopkins wasn't there, uh, Oscar De La Hoya, and, um, and uh, Joe Goosen wasn't there? I have no idea. Should they have been there for him? Yes, they should have. Um, another good move I think Ryan Garcia can do, once his contract is up with Golden Boy, go sign with Mayweather. That would be a good move. Go sign with May Mayweather. That would be a good PR stunt for you from a, from a public relations standpoint. That would be good as well. Other than that, that's all I got for you guys. This is our Buckles Melica Williams signing out. See you guys today, 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Rick Glazer will be on the show to talk about the 700,000 plus uh, pay per view buys that, that, that the Davis Garcia fight sold. Um, it hasn't been confirmed yet, but I think once the numbers come in, maybe Showtime will release those numbers. Uh, maybe that fight would have done over a million uh, worldwide. We'll see. See you guys today, 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. You know my motto don't beat me there, beat me there. Peace. Man, I'm out of here, bro. Let's go.